welcome to Electrify, the video show and podcast for electricians only, with your hosts Paul Abernathy and Jay the Basement King Grunberg. Sit back and enjoy the show. What up, everybody? Welcome to another episode here on Electrify. This episode is dedicated to helping you become better at researching the National Electrical Code. If you're looking for changes in the code or you want more knowledge of why something changed in the code rather than ask somebody, guess what? You can research it yourself. And so I'm going to kind of show you the process. I'm going to give you an example of how to research something. And you will be able to do that at the end. Now, it is going to mean that you have to have a little bit of a knowledge when something may have changed. Otherwise, you're going to go one cycle at a time back in time in order to try to hunt down it to why something changed. And again, it makes you kind of a little uh, researcher, if you will. And so, but it also helps you get a more in-depth understanding of the National Electrical Code. Okay, so first things first. If you don't have an account with NFPA, that's at nfpa.org, go get your free account. It's free. And you just go to the website, and then you will go and you will register. Once you register, log in, and you'll see a screen very similar to this, okay? Now, what you're going to do is we're going to show you an example of how you would research something. And I'll walk you through this so that you can get an understanding of what happened, what, what, what takes place, okay? All right, so... First thing I want to tell you is, is a little story, okay? I mean, let me tell you a little story. Story time with Paul. So many people wonder what happened at one point in the code, in the 2008 edition of the NEC, small segments of raceway that were considered unsupported required a support. Now, there was a new subdivision that was added under section 30 of 358 for EMT, but it was also added for others as well that added a new statement about unsupported raceways, okay? Um, This was added in the 2008 edition. It was not in the 2004, but it appeared in the 2008, and it disappeared again in the 2011 edition. So if you wanted to research and say, okay, so if I had an 18-inch piece of raceway, Let's call it a nipple. So it's 18 inches. I have an 18 inch nipple. And I was going to put it between two cabinets for whatever reason. I've got a cabinet over here, cabinet over here. And I want to put this 18 inch raceway between it, call it a nipple. And it's unbroken, but I secured it at both ends through a fitting to the cabinet, secured with lock nuts, if you will. So it's rigid. It's not going anywhere. You follow me? There was a period in the 2008 code that would have required you to place a strap on that. Reality was, what the code says is that, for example, EMT, we'll use EMT, that you could go from the termination, you have to secure the raceway within three feet of the termination of that EMT tubing. Okay, well, if you have a cabinet here, and you have a cabinet here, and you have a raceway running between them into a fitting, which the cable industry and the code acknowledges that fittings are considered securement and support mechanisms, okay? So what happens is this piece of raceway, whether it's 18 inches, 24 inches, or even up to 36 inches, is secured at both ends. So this raceway is secured and it is supported, okay? Because the code says that you have to secure it within three feet, okay? We're going to look at that, 358.30, and you're going to see what it says in A, and you're going to understand this as we look through this history lesson here. So the proposal that was given to us in the 2008 code was unnecessary. And again, it's one of those things that things get into the code that is totally unnecessary, because the code already has a good explanation on how to address this, but sometimes proposals just get in there and ultimately they get taken out later. Sometimes we have to suffer through it for a cycle 
but then it disappears. But I'm going to show you the logic here, and you'll get an understanding. So we're going to use EMT as our reference, and I'm going to show you how to research what happened here. Now, again, it does help you to know when something appeared and when it doesn't. And the good thing about the NEC today is that new stuff is highlighted, so you can see what changed. And if you want to research it and learn why something changed in the code, that's a great way to look at it and then go back into the code, go back into the NFPA's website and look and see the rationale for why something changed. Now, as it gets further back in history, it becomes a, a little bit harder. I get it. But again, that's the concept of how we want to do it. Okay. So let's kind of do that and run through a lesson. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to get us here. So I'm on my website. I'm on NFPA's website. Um, and I've logged in. So the first thing I'm going to do is let's look at the code itself first. And we're going to look at the 2011 edition because that's the first time that the, the, the a reference to unsupported raceways when it comes to the addition of the requirement from the 28, 20, 2008 edition disappeared in the 2011 edition. But I want to show you how you can do this for free. Okay, so let me go here. So I'm going to go to codes and standards. I'm going to click on list of NFPA codes and standards. Remember, get yourself a free account. Then I'm going to go down here and I'm going to go to the 2000, uh, the, the NFPA 70 tab, which is for the NEC. I'm going to click on that. Now, here's something neat. Here on this screen, you get a lot of options. I can log into my NFCSS account, which lets me see all of the NFPA standards if you pay for that, or you have what's called a free access button, okay? So I'm gonna do something here and I'm going to go to the edition, I'm gonna do free access. So currently it's on the 2020 NEC, right? So watch what I'm gonna do here. So let, I'm going to go here and I'm gonna say, well, let's go to the 2008 edition of the NEC. And I'm gonna select that edition. Okay, so once I select that edition here, okay, now also real quick, let's go on and so we're on this edition, but let's go on and click free access. Once you click free access, you're going to get the edition you want. Let's go real quick, look at the 2008 so we can see what the code view says. Now, once you get, uh, no, I see I've got an account, but I don't want to, I don't want to do that. Proceed to the free access, sign the agreement. So here's what it looks like on your screen. Okay, this is your free version for those that aren't familiar with the free version. Okay. Now I do recommend you support the NFPA, but this is your this is your free version. So let's go to table of contents and I'm going to jump down to EMT 358. So here I'm at this and I'm going to go until I get to where I want to be and this is securing and supporting. Okay? So this is what I, and then you know what? Uh, and I'm not sure whether or not you can see this well enough, so I'll see if I can blow this up a little bit and whether or not you can see it. So we got enough here that we can, we can see here because here is where we're talking about the change. Okay. Okay. So let's look at this. 358.30, you see the highlights. So these highlights are letting me know that there was a change for this edition. And that was the advent of C. What does C say? Okay. So here's C and I'll try to, to, uh, See if I can't blow this up a little bit more. Okay, here's what it says. It says, where oversized concentric or eccentric knockouts are not encountered, type EMT shall be permitted to be unsupported where the raceway is not more than 18 inches, okay, and remains in unbroken length without coupling. Such raceways shall terminate at an outlet box, device box, cabinet, or other termination at each end of the raceway. So in the, 20, the 2008 edition, this was introduced. Now we want to see why this was introduced. Okay, so I'm using this as an example because this disappears in the 2011, okay? But we're gonna research it. We wanna see why this is, because this isn't standard industry practice. Standard industry practice would say, look, if I have two cabinets and I have an unbroken raceway in the middle, that even if it was three feet between it, it would not require any individual support for that raceway. Why? Because it's considered secured and supported at its termination. But this was introduced. So we're gonna read the rationale 
And then I'm going to walk you through how this changed because this was an unnecessary addition to the National Escrow Code. Okay. So let's kind of, I'm going to walk you through it. So let me go on and get back here. So that's where we're at. Okay. So as you can see, this being the free version of the NEC. Okay. So I'm going to close this down and I'm going to reduce my screen, bring me back down to where everything is, is really on the screen for you. Okay. So let's do a little research. First thing I want to do is I want to see what was the basis point of getting this in the 2008 NEC. That's the first thing I do as I'm researching a change. Why did this get in there? Okay, so we're going to go do it. I'm going to go here. So I'm going to go to the current and prior editions. I'm going to come down here and there's a drop down list here. You might not be able to see it because of the way the screen capture goes, but I'm going to select a 2008 edition and then I'm going to hit select edition. Now, once I select that, you're going to scroll down and you see a lot of information. We're going to go to the very first part of our research, and that is the report on proposals. Now, today they're called public input and public comments. These public inputs are now available in TerraView, which is a lot easier way to look things up. You don't have to worry about a PDF or all this kind of stuff, right? But we're going to show you what you would do if you had to go back in time when it was on PDF version. So here's the report on, on proposals, okay? So we're going to go look at the view, and here we are. Now, I'm going to increase this so you folks can see a little bit. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to the, the article that deals with the EMT. Okay, so it'll take me a second. I will scroll down and look for it. Bear with me as I do this. Don't get dizzy along the way. And we're going to try to find it. Okay, we're pretty close. So we're going to individually scroll now. Okay, there's liquid. There we go. Here's EMT. We see it right here. Okay, so now we've got this, this EMT. So what we're going to do is we're going to look for section 30 because we want to see how the C statement got put in there. Okay, so let's go and see what we've got. And we're going to go scroll down until we get to... Okay, here's someone says something tells me it's going to start down here. Okay, here we go. So the first thing that you want to look at, if you just want to read rationales, you can look at the rejected. But we know that the C was added. So we want to look for those that were accepted. Okay, so this was accepted. And any of the other 30s weren't accepted. I'm looking up here and see uh, this was rejected for 30. So we're going to deal with what was accepted. So here's the rationale for accepted. It says, add the following text to 358.30. All right, so this is 8-104, uh, the log. This is to code panel 8. It was accepted by code panel 8. And the rationale, and again, it wasn't a unanimous. It was 10 to 2, okay? But here's what they said. Unsupported raceways. Type EMT shall be permitted to be unsupported where the raceway is not more than 3 feet in length and remains an unbroken length without couplings, okay? Such raceways shall terminate in an outlet box, junction box, device box, cabinet, or other termination at the end of the raceway, okay? So the tubing, when it ends, it ends at a coupling, it ends at a cabinet, it ends at a junction box. It's when that joint or that stick or modified stick that you happen to cut off at certain length ends, Okay, and it ends in a fitting. Okay, now this was a substantiation for it, um, and you can read it. I encourage you to research it. Okay, but this was the substantiation that was given, and it said unsupported raceways are violations of the code that occur every day. Now, I disagree with that because if you read the language of the code, you're allowed to go with EMT from its termination up to three feet before you have a support. And in fact, even under the exceptions, it would have let you go up to five feet to the support. It's still supported. It's still secured. It just gives you the allowance to go up to a certain distance. Look, that's pretty solid stuff. EMT as well as rigid, IMC, it's not going to sag, okay? In fact, the code allows you to support it at 10-foot intervals for EMT. What's going to happen to that 10-foot span. If you're worried about a 3-foot, 
You should really be worried about 10 foot. What do you want? Straps every foot? Common sense has to come into play here. So anyway, that was the rationale. I disagree. It is not a violation of the code. Anyway, it goes on to, you know, make a, a substantiation. And of course, you have 10 that agree and two that disagree. Okay. All right. So this was accepted. All right, so, it's, so once it's accepted in the ROP, then it gets reviewed by everybody in what's called the ROC, which is report on comments. Now we call public comments. But we want to look and see if anybody was kind of against this. And you're going to see where the, 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 the common sense starts to come into play here. So let's go on and do that. So we're going to go back over here. And, and all the draft is, is the, the public's version of it. So what, what the code actually looks like after it's been ratified for that portion of the, of the process. So here's the second draft. And here's the report on comments. We're going to view that real quick. And we're going to do the same thing we did before. We're going to scroll down and we're going to try to find 358 as quickly as possible. Go back a little bit. Okay, there's 340. And let me go down a little bit, 352, and okay, 358. So I'm going to blow it up a little bit for you. Okay, so let's kind of move down. So we're going to stick with the accepts again, but we're going to also pay attention to some people's statements, okay? And that's where you start to understand where this is going. So in the acceptance... We have some people made some statements about this is where the 18 inch came in uh, for certain pieces that were unsupported by basically the, the gist of what they were trying to achieve at the original public uh, at the proposal. Um, but we're going to look and see the acceptance. So here is where they accepted again C and they added this to the end to make reference to C. Uh, this was by a gentleman I have the utmost respect for. Um, but here's where you start to get stuff. Check this out. Here's a rejection. Now, check this out. This is where you start to understand where, and this is a submitter right here. I love him. Uh, some people are, 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 are say he's very abrasive. I love it. And, and he's, and I get his book. He writes a book. He does his own handbook, by the way, which I highly recommend you add to your library. Uh, I love his straightforward, no-nonsense approach. Now, uh, is he always right? Like, am I always right? Maybe not. We're, we're, we're entitled to our opinion, and you can agree to disagree. But he's pretty spot on most of the time, okay? And uh, so, look, this is what it was, it, the proposal. He says, this was rejected by the committee. Remember, it's during this stage that they want to accept this C anyway. So it says, the concept of a special support rule for short lengths of raceway runs between enclosures of various sorts is without technical substantiation and at variance from the routine trade practice. No such requirement has ever been in the NEC. In fact, if you go look at the 2005 edition, this was not there, and we've been getting along pretty well up to this point, right? Now, it says, raceways generally require support within three feet of termination. And when the entire length is just that long, in other words, three feet or less, then no additional support is ever required. In effect, a lock nut and bushing on connectors and lock nuts at each end are considered supports. This is not a new concept for the NEC. In fact, the code making panel seven just added wording under their wiring method requirements for fittings shall be permitted as a means of a cable support. And trust me, they're not trying to support anything that doesn't have rigidness to it. These are flexible cables. These are MCs, things like that, that are flexible. Yet we're considering those fittings, those connectors, as a support. You with me? All right, so if this and its companion proposals, that's for all the other wiring methods that are like this, like rigid, intermediate, EMT, or whatnot, remains accepted, the various tubular rigid raceways will be expected to grow clamps or they will look rather strange, such as in the middle of a 90-degree sweep, again, depending on the length, if 
it has a coupling and a three-inch extension to make a required distance. This proposal is without precedent and addresses a non-existent problem. There was no problem here. And this submitter brought that out. All right, now, the code panel responded to that and said, Section 358.30a specifically states, each type of ENT shall be securely fastened within three feet of each outlet box, junction box, device box, cabinet, conduit body, or other conduit termination. Okay? Um, in fact, they probably should reevaluate their, their statement because EMT is not a conduit, it's a tubing, but that's okay. It happens, I get it. It should say, or other tubing terminations, or other raceway terminations. Again, tubing is not a conduit, but it is a raceway. So anyway, it says, quote, there is no special support rule, just the already existing securely fastened rule, okay? So what they're saying is, basically, the code stands on its own, we're going to add C. We really can't justify C, but we're going to accept C. You with me? So it ended up being printed in the 2008 edition of the National Electrical Code. Okay, let's speed forward now. Let's go back up here and let's change our edition to the 2011 and click view. Okay, oops, well, we don't want to look at that again. So hold on for a second. Let me... Let me turn that off. Sorry about that. We don't really want to look at that. We want to go and do it right here. Okay, so we want to change this to 2011 because that's when we know the change took place to remove C. And now you can go down and we want to do the same thing we did before. Let's go to the ROP and we'll view it. Now, this is ROP, so we're going to look and see what people proposed. And I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to get to... Went to a little too far there. Got to come back a little bit. People say, Paul, use the search feature. Will you do that in your videos? I'll do what I do in mine. Uh, you certainly have the choice to watch my videos or not. That's your choice. All right, so I'm going to zoom up. All right, so let's look and see what we've got here. So now we're at 358.30. There was quite a few submittals here. And you will notice that for C, that this was rejected. This C was rejected because they were trying to add on to the existing C. And you'll notice that this 300, uh, this 358.30 C was accepted. So that's one we're going to focus on. This one was submitted by the original submitter in 2008, was rejected. And we see that this one, which is trying to add language here, get rid of that 18 inches because it was irrelevant. Uh, so people starting to jockey now and say, wait a minute, I th think this, this 18-inch rule or this rule for unsupported is irrelevant. But they all get rejected. Why do they get rejected? Because this one was accepted. Now let's look at this one. It was submitted by somebody I highly respect. He was the president uh, of the IAEI for many, many years. Uh, a wealth of knowledge. Um, he is out of North Carolina area great guy and he submitted the recommendation that says look you need to delete this provision you need to also delete this, the clause at the end of 358.30 because we're going to be getting rid of c anyway so you don't need to make a reference to it so here's what he said now here's this is a lot of explanation i encourage you to go do the research on it but i want you to get to the crux of it okay of, of the of the of the point it says right here Raceways generally require support within three feet of termination. And when the entire length is just that long or shorter, no additional support should be needed. In effect, the lock nuts and bushings or connectors and lock nuts at each end are supports. Now, this is pretty much verbatim from what the submitter put in the 2008 edition that was, again, at the, uh, at the final stage of the ROC that the code panel rejected. And they went with 358.30C, and they rejected his rationale, which was good rationale. There was no technical substantiation. It wasn't a violation in the 2008 proposal or the, 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 uh, the 
the public input or whatever they called it back then, uh, proposal, whatever. Um, it's so many changes since then from report on proposals to now it's called public input. It's so confusing. I'm trying to get used to the new language, public input, public comments, first draft, second draft revisions, whatever. All right. So it made sense. Fred made sense. He made common sense to everyday practice because Fred is used to being an electrical contractor. It's not just an educator, right? He, he's gotten his hands dirty. He knows that it's unnecessary because of the current rule. Well, this is also what Mr. Carpenter understands, and that's why it's for submitted. Now, many people want to focus on this panel statement. It says, CMP8 does not necessarily agree with the suspender's substantiation. Certainly, they may not agree with all of it, and I think this is a poor statement from a code panel. In other words, when you accept something, but yet you're saying you don't agree with the substantiation, but you accepted it, probably the poorer choice of panel statements. And today we make much more detailed panel statements than back then, maybe. Um, but it still was 11 to 1, okay? And in reality is because it's common sense. Common sense to the approach. So ultimately, at that point, it was accepted. And then it went into the the ROC for this one. And let's go look at that one so that we can see what happened. So we're going to go now to the ROC. We'll view that. We want to see if it's stuck. And of course, we know it does stick and it is removed for the 2011. But we want to finish this chain of research that we're doing. And you should be able to do the same thing. And we're going to go down here and we're going to find it. Okay. PDFs being what they will. I know people say, we well, use the search feature, Paul. Again, when you do your own, you can do whatever you want to do. Go for it. All right, so I'm going to go back here. There we go. Now, I'll blow this up a little bit so you can see it. So this is the report on comments right before it's finally published. Okay, of course, we have NITMAMs, a notice of intent to make a motion, but none took place with this issue. So let's kind of go down and see here. So again, here was a reject where somebody said, no, no, you need to add back C, okay? But it was rejected, okay? They said C810 for their comment, okay? Here, tried to add back C, it was rejected, okay? Uh, and uh, here, again, so this is 60, so, so here we see it was rejected. So that means that C, uh, three, uh, 358 dot C, uh, or yeah, 358.30C is, is gone, disappeared. It's going to not be in the 2011 edition. Now, it's said to see their comments at 8-10. So let's just go on and look at their comments. See what they said. So that, that's where you're looking right here at the, the log. And I'm going to go to 8-10, see what they said. So here's 8-10. Now, granted, this one's for 342, okay? So IMC, but again, they just didn't want to be redundant, okay? So the panel statement right here, and, okay, it says the comment does not address the concern of smaller raceways and exposed locations. That's really not relevant to what we're talking about. What is more important is this part down here. It says, however, a raceway that is supported within three feet of termination has been demonstrated to provide effective support. Any decision to omit the support required by general rule that is within three feet of a raceway termination is a decision best made in the field by the AHJ based on the circumstances of a given installation. So you follow the code rules. The AHJ can modify it, but they're assuming some responsibility because the code is a minimum standard. Okay. But basically, this is a code panel saying, look, we've made a statement. We're going to stick with it. If you have a box and you have a securement within three feet, in this case, box to box, and the raceway is only three feet, then guess what? It's considered secured. It's considered supported. Trust me. Don't worry about that small three-foot piece of EMT or rigid or IMC. Don't worry about it sagging, folks. Look, the general rule allows me to go with EMT up to 10 feet between supports. 
Nobody seems to be worrying about that. So I don't think I should worry about three feet, okay? It's called common sense, and that's what we're trying to establish here. So I just kind of took you through the, the scenario of how we get from here to there. And so, you know, it's just that simple in how we get from point A to point B. So hopefully you learned something. And yeah, research the code. You can go through and learn why things are done the way they are by looking at the past history of code panel statements. So hopefully you learned something and get that free account at NFPA and make sure you use it to your best ability. And if you have any questions, as always, feel free to reach out to somebody who can give you some assistance to help you better understand why things are what they are in the national code. Till next time, folks, stay safe. God bless. You've been listening to Electrify with your hosts, Paul Abernathy and Jay, the Basement King Grunberg.